All righty. Uh, as you can tell, I am under the weather, if you will. But please bear with me, and we will make it through what is Chapter 19, Doppler. Uh, so let's first describe the Doppler shift, or sometimes called Doppler frequency. It's simply a change in frequency. For example, you're standing on the corner when Annette races by in her son's very fast car. Um, the noise from the car's screaming engine seems to increase in frequency as Annette gets closer and decreases in frequency as she departs away. Notice this is the, the sound frequency the, the, in what you hear, okay, because that's what we're doing with Doppler. We're using more of we're, we're testing velocities, but by by hearing it. So that, you know, even a plane passing over your head or a car passing, any car passing by, motorcycle, you hear the, the revving engine as it goes away. Forgive me, that was a terrible example. But, <coughs> it's, <coughs> excuse me, it serves the purpose. Please, for, again, please forgive my under the weather. Uh, the frequency changes um, as a result of relative motion between the sound source and the receiver. You standing on the corner are the receiver, and Nets car is the sound source. That's very obvious. Uh, the frequency of sound changes when the sound source and the receiver move closer or further apart. So if you're standing still, which would be our transducer, the blood cells coming towards you are in Nets car coming towards you versus the blood cells going away from you or in Nets car going away from you. That's the signal that we're hearing. That's the sound source. This physical principle is used to measure velocity of blood in the body. The Doppler shift is the low frequency that rides or jumps on board of the much higher transducers transmitted frequency. It's that extra frequency that is produced when we, when we hit moving red blood cells with our sound beam. Um, it's that interaction. The process of extracting the low Doppler frequency from the high transducer frequency is called demodulation. Now you may have heard this before in, uh, with rectification and in, uh, enveloping within the, the converters, but it's sort of it's it's a similar used term or it's it's used similarly to basically just take off of that skim off the top that extra frequency so we can process it um, for example sound is transmitted from the transducer with a frequency of five million hertz or five megahertz and reflects off a moving red blood off moving red blood cells the frequency of the reflected signal then becomes 5,003,000 hertz. The Doppler shift or that change in frequency is a plus 3,000 hertz. Now notice that's a positive number. The shift is positive because the reflected sound is greater than the transmitted sound. That's a simple, if you get more than what you sent out that's a, a positive. That's in anything. If I give you a dollar, you give me two back. That's a that's a positive return. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it can be concluded that the red blood cells are traveling towards the transducer. The noise is getting louder as the net's coming towards you. That's a positive. It's getting weaker as it goes away from you. That's a negative. You see where it's going. Doppler shifts are created when transmitted sound waves strike moving red blood cells. And and this is we're going to kind of beat this in our heads here by talking about this. Let me get a little camera adjustment here, sorry. Okay, dokie. Um so positive Doppler shifts when red blood cells move towards the transducer. The reflected signal is higher than the transmitted signal. We just talked about that. So it can, it's very simple. Negative Doppler shifts then become 
when red blood cells move away from the transducer. The reflected frequency is lower than the transmitted signal. And this is exactly the way you're going to answer these questions, whether it's my test or the registry. <coughs> Excuse me again. Speed versus velocity. Now we spoke earlier in the earlier chapters about this just a little bit, and and we spoke of uh, we already know the difference between these two. So let's go back to let's back up a little bit and go back to basics. You know what is speed? What is velocity? Uh, Doppler frequencies specifically indicate velocity, not speed, and there's a reason. We know that speed is a magnitude, the distance a red blood cell travels in one second. How fast is Annette going? She's going 85 miles an hour in a 35. But that 85 miles an hour is just the speed, right? Do you know which way she's going? She's going up, down, sideways, left, right, north, south, east, west. You just know a magnitude. Whereas velocity is magnitude and direction expressed in centimeters per second toward or away from the transducer and that is important to us in in several reasons because when we evaluate there are certain vessels where if the blood flow is going the opposite direction that's a diagnostic quality you know in the vertebrals in uh, the portal vein <coughs> are two of the, the the main ones that we look at we need to tell the doctor if it's if it's going towards or away from the transducer. Um, and that gives them the idea that, okay, something's going wrong, everything's backed up down the road, it needs to find another way, back, another way around it, so it backs up a little bit and finds its way around. So velocity with Doppler is very, very important. Uh, of course, there has to be a formula, and that formula is, and you just have to learn to recognize it, and we'll describe each part of it, but it's the Doppler shift equals 2 times the velocity of blood times the transducer frequency times the cosine of 0 divided by the propagation speed. The only thing that, that should stand out and make you wonder what that is is the cosine 0. So uh, let's talk about Doppler shift and blood cell velocity. They are directly related. Uh, the faster the velocity, the greater the Doppler frequency. That's very simple. For example, a Doppler study is performed and the Doppler shift is 8 kilohertz or 8,000 hertz when the blood's velocity is 2 meters per second. If the blood velocity slows to 1 meter per second, the Doppler shift will be reduced to, you got it, 4 kilohertz. Here, this example is just basically showing that direct relationship. The velocity uh, was decreased by half, so the Doppler shift was decreased by half. If I increased it, if I doubled it, then the other would double. Whatever happens to one happens to the other, directly related. <coughs> Excuse me. Bear with me. Uh, when the velocity is halved, the Doppler shift is halved. Uh, why is there a 2 in the Doppler equation? Well, the 2 represents the fact that there are actually two Doppler shifts during a clinical ultrasound exam. Uh, the first shift, when, so when sound waves strike moving blood cells. That alone, or that interaction alone, is enough to create a Doppler shift. Uh, the first shift occurs when the sound wave from the transducer strikes moving blood cells. Uh, by itself, the reception of sound wave by the moving blood is sufficient to create that Doppler shift. It's just describing the one shift. So we send it, they interact, that's a shift. The second shift results from the reception of the reflected sound wave by the transducer from the moving of blood cells when we get it back. There's just kind of like a coming and or a going and coming shift. It's, it's strictly just so that you understand it. So let's talk a little bit about Hertz and centimeters per second. 
Uh, modern systems measure the frequency difference in hertz between the received and transmitted sound waves. However, the Doppler equation is programmed into the ultrasound system's computer. So we don't have to do all that. We just turn on the Doppler, measure, and it's done. We don't have to equate anything. Um, the calculated result of that Doppler equation is uh, expressed as the velocity of blood. It makes more sense clinically to express the velocity of blood in an artery as 100 centimeters per second as opposed to telling the doctor that there's a 3 kilohertz Doppler shift. He, he'll have no clue. If he says, hey, how is the velocity... <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, how was the velocity in the, the ICA? Well, there was a 6 kilohertz uh, Doppler shift, Doc. I'm sorry, what? How was it? See how it makes more sense? You know, we have that velocity makes much more sense. <coughs> Lord, have mercy. Y'all are going to hear me cough this whole time. Just bear with me. Uh, Doppler shift and transducer frequency. Another direct relationship. Uh, if the transmitted frequency is reduced to half, the measured Doppler shift will also be reduced to half. Excuse me, I'm going to pause this.